I wanted to explain why I prefer Smith & Wesson revolvers over Taurus revolvers and a lot of other revolvers that use the transfer bar safety. I find that the Smith & Wesson is a more reliable design and people are going to kind of question what they what I mean by that because revolvers are often known for being re reliable in general but a Smith & Wesson uses a hammer block system which I find to be more reliable than the transfer bar system and Taurus uses the transfer bar system. A lot of people mistakenly think that Smith & Wesson uses a transfer bar because they'll see this little part right here. And they'll think that this is a transfer bar here and this is not, this is called the hammer block. And why it's different is because a hammer block pretty much never comes into play. It's a little piece of metal here. And it only comes into play if you were to drop your revolver or, or let off the trigger and bring the hammer down basically takes on no impact as where a transfer bar takes on constant impact. So let me explain here the system here in a Smith & Wesson. So the Smith & Wesson, basically when you cock the hammer or you fire in double action, we have a little rebound slide right here that has a little nub on it and it's got another nub right here. And this is part of the hammer block system on this rebound slide. Um, so when you cock the hammer or fire the gun, basically what happens is this slide here it'll slide back so when it slid back and we keep our finger fully depressed to the rear it stays in position the hammer comes down nothing is impeded here and our Smith & Wesson contacts the firing pin which is right back here nothing is impeded whatsoever when we drop that uh, hammer because our rebound side and these little nubs don't get in the way of each other. But you saw there when I let off the trigger, the rebound slide moves forward. And it's going to go underneath this little nub here. It's going to push the hammer back away from the firing pin. And then these two little nubs, the one on the bottom of the hammer and the one on the top of the rebound slide, line up and they block the ability for that hammer to hit that firing pin. Very simple design. So if I were to let off that, that trigger, um, the rebound slide is going to come back with the trigger. It's going to block you know, the hammer at, at those nubs. And it did not impact the firing pin. So this is our hammer block and it sits on a rebound slide right here. And what that does is it pretty much mirrors what the rebound slide is doing and it's pushing that um, that that hammer block up so as you can see the position right here when I cock this and by the way this sits in the side plate from the other from the other side there so it can only move up and down like that but for display purposes here it'll move a little bit back and forth which it wouldn't in in the gun when the side plates on but basically what happens if I keep my finger fully pulled to the rear this hammer block here stays where it is it doesn't move you see and we have a very pure direct hammer to firing pin impact but if I were let off the hammer and this is going to stay in the same position what's going to happen is that rebound slide is going to move forward and then it's going to push that hammer block up like that blocking the hammer and the firing pin. It's going to go between two pieces of, or it's going to go in front of this piece of frame right here and block that hammer. So again, I'm going to cock the hammer and we'll see that this uh, hammer block here, if it was sitting up here like this, it's going to fall out of the way. And it's going to fall into this little space of its own cut into the frame here and not be impeded. And the hammer's not going to be impeded by that. So most of our hammer blocking really is happening on our rebound slide here. But with this hammer block in place, you know, the rebound slide completely controls it, you know, so we have a secondary. So basically when that's cocked or it's ready to fire and the hammer's fully back to the rear, it's going to stay out of the way. Pretty simple. I let off the trigger and let the hammer drop. It lifts up to that position there, making an impossible, a secondary impossibility. So overall, I find that the Smith & Wesson it's not only a better design, but it's more reliable and it's smoother because we're directly impacting a hammer onto a firing pin. You know, there's nothing that's really going to break. This is never impacted, pretty much ever, unless you're letting down that uh, 
hammer like if I was doing this and I were to let off let that fall like that that's the only time this is ever impacted and it's really not even an impacted because most of that impact is going to be stopped right there on those little nubs on the rebound slide so really it's a very simple design and it's a very robust design because the part here our hammer is really massive in size and our trigger is massive in size so there's not really anything taken on any impact except this hammer hitting this part of this frame which also includes the uh firing pins so pretty simple design in my opinion and better than Taurus so let me disassemble a Taurus now and show you how that works all right here's the inside of a Taurus revolver and a Taurus revolver works completely differently it works essentially the opposite of the Smith & Wesson so you know we don't have a hammer block down here we just have a spring for the trigger and whatnot we have just a really regular hammer spring here so if I cock that hammer or um, pull that trigger keep an eye on this little part right here this is our transfer bar so what you'll see is it lifts up as i cock that hammer or if i was pulling the trigger double action it would lift up and our firing pin is right there behind it and that is lined up with our firing pin and when you let off the trigger what happens is that hammer will slam into that transfer bar and that transfer bar will slam into that firing pin causing the gun to fire. Now, if you let off the trigger and just let the hammer drop, what will happen is that transfer bar will drop out of the way. And what makes this safe is rather than having a block or something like that, this is designed so that the hammer can never reach the firing pin on its own. You see at the top of the hammer, there's a little nub that's behind the frame here, right here, and that stops on the frame. There's always going to be that void right there between that hammer and that firing pin. This could never, ever, ever fire, ever, without that transfer bar because it's designed so that the hammer cannot ever hit the firing pin. That's where our Smith & Wesson is designed, so that is how it operates. The, the hammer has to hit that firing pin. So this is a completely opposite design of the Smith & Wesson. Very simple. A lot of companies use this. Colt uses this nowadays. Uh, Ruger uses it. Charter Arms uses it. And Taurus uses it. Very simple. So I keep my finger fully pulled to the rear. The hammer impacts that transfer bar. Transfer bar impacts that firing pin. Pretty simple design there. And if I let off the trigger, you know, the uh, transfer bar is going to fall out of the way because the transfer bar is kind of connected down here. It's part of the trigger mechanism. So it's going to fall out of the way at the same time. At the same rate that the hammer falls so that can only fire when the, when the trigger is fully pulled so both are really solid designs i'd say the smith and wesson is a little bit more complicated in some respect but it's kind of a double safety let me reassemble this and talk about this some more so there's definitely some advantages when it comes to a hammer block system versus a transfer bar and yeah these are completely different size guns these are just the ones that are the biggest of each I have that I can, you know, work with the easiest. But basically why I like Smith & Wesson better is I find them to be more reliable. And people will say, well, a revolver is always reliable. But the thing you have to understand is with a design like this, those parts are really in there really well with our hammer block. They're not going anywhere. They, they're sitting on specific pins. They're the type of parts that really cannot get dislodged unless, I guess, all your screws are loose and your side plate fell off. So basically, it's going to be a very reliable design. Not much can go wrong. You pull the trigger, the hammer lifts, the hammer drops, and the hammer hits directly on the firing pin. And these are, you know, strong parts. A hammer is a big, strong part. We have that secondary part of that, that uh, hammer block, you know, that moves out of the way. So it's a very pure action. It's a very smooth action. It's a very reliable app action that not a lot can go wrong with pull trigger hammer drops on firing pin or the old style smith and wesson's where i had a firing pin on the hammer basically the same thing that's kind of why smith and wesson's design is the way that it is is because you really couldn't back in the day put a transfer bar up and block the uh, firing pin that's on the hammer that, that's intending to drop so i find it funny when people say that the these smith and wesson uses the transfer bar now the thing i don't like about the transfer bar is that you're taking this little itty bitty part like I showed in there you're relying on that for every single shot a very small piece of metal 
that is very susceptible to breaking. I broke two on two different Taurus revolvers before. So that is a big deal. Now, I don't think it's necessarily a huge issue for the average person that buys one of these for self-defense. Shoots a few rounds to it, shoots it double action, all of that. But I will explain, you know, why it's not necessarily the best gun for everybody. Like, if you're going to hand load like I do, and I used to hand load 750 to 1,000 rounds a weekend and shoot them all. And I would shoot a lot of them single action because I was dialing in, you know, our, the loads for getting, you know, perfect accuracy and stuff like that. And what you'll notice on, on any revolver, any double action, is if you pull that uh, trigger here, you'll see how far the hammer comes back. It comes back to a certain point right about there. Okay, and then it's going to drop. Whenever you go single action, it goes back much further. So there's Smith & Wesson. We can do the same thing on this Taurus here. It comes back to about that point. And it's going to drop forward. If we cock it in single action, it comes all the way back to the frame. So that might be why you might notice sometimes you can get like a bad primer strike even more than one time on a double action shot. You put it in single action and then that will make the shot go off because there's a little bit more hammer strength there. So why that is a problem is that if you get like a thousand rounds, you load them up and you fire every single shot, single action, thousand rounds a weekend, you're putting a lot of stress on that transfer bar that doesn't need to be there. As where if you did something like that with a Smith & Wesson, it doesn't matter if it's double action, it doesn't matter if it's single action, there is no transfer bar that takes that impact. It is, it is hammer to firing pin, period. And the safety that's in there that makes it drop safe is a very good system. As where something like this is more of a cheap system, yeah, it works, but you're relying on that little piece of metal every single shot. And to me, that's really not a good idea when it comes to having something that is reliable because that can break. Now, I've had several Ruger revolvers and I've never had transfer bars break on those. And I think that's because Ruger uses better steel than Taurus. I don't have any personal experience with Charger Arms or Colt, but just overall the design, even if it was made out of titanium, I can't necessarily say that's really a good design that you have to throw a hammer into a transfer bar. The transfer bar has to throw into the firing pin. It just doesn't seem like that good of a design. Rather, I would prefer to have my hammer drop right on that firing pin and set that round off. To me, it makes more sense. It's more reliable. Why I prefer Smith & Wessons, I feel like probably nothing's gonna go wrong. And, you know, looking back in my experience, you have no idea what it felt like. Maybe you do sitting there shooting one of my new revolvers. I only put 500 rounds through one and like 750 through the other. And then it locked up because that transfer bar sheared off, went down into the action. I couldn't get out. I'm shaking the thing. And there comes that transfer bar. You're done. There's no way that gun can fire because the hammer is not designed to reach the firing pin and you're done. And they put that design on the weakest part of metal you can think of. So that's why I like uh, Smith and Wesson better. I feel like, you know, when the moment counts, I think Smith & Wesson's going to do a better job for me. So that's what you get today with my opinion on that. Just showing some of how these actions work. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.